Welcome to Spreadsheet Geek. In this video, we'll take a look at the XIRR function. This internal rate of return function is very sophisticated and it allows you to compute the internal rate of return of future cash flows occurring at irregular intervals in time. It goes hand in hand with the X net present value function I did a video on in the past. I'll link that video along with another video I did on the IRR function in the description to this video. This video was made using Microsoft Excel 2019. What is internal rate of return? Let's review. It's the rate of return that equates the present value of future cash flows with the cost of the investment. As an example, let's say we're paying $10,000 for a business and we know that business will generate $1,000 in the first year, $2,000 in the second year, $3,000 in the third year, and so on to $5,000 in the fifth year. The internal rate of return is the discount rate of those future cash flows that would value them at what we're paying for the business, which is $10,000. In other words, we'd want to solve this equation for IRR. Here's a similar project A with slightly different numbers and a different timeline. We're going to put $12,000 down at time zero in the first year. And at the end of that first year, we expect a positive cash flow of $6,000, followed by these other cash flows in the subsequent years. Let's compute the internal rate of return of this project using the old IRR function. All we're required to enter is the values and we're given the opportunity to take a guess at what this internal rate of return will be. The default is 10% if you don't guess. The IRR function uses an iterative process where it goes through up to 20 cycles, high and low, where it's guessing one way or the other, and it narrows down to one answer. I'm gonna enter 12% just to be entering something and we'll see that that gives us an internal rate of return of 52 percent given that the sum of our cash flows is 22,000 and that we're putting 12 down and we're getting a big payment in the third year this sounds like a reasonable answer for our problem now let's compute the net present value using the net present value function we're required to enter a discount rate if we want to compute our net present value. Well, I'm gonna use this rate, the internal rate of return. So theoretically, if I use that rate, I should get to a net present value of $12,000. And remember, when you use the net present value function, you're only entering the subsequent cash flows. So let's see what that gives us, and it's $12,000. That's the IRR and the NPV function. These are good functions to use, but they do have an Achilles heel in that they assume that these cash flows are occurring at standard intervals, in this case, one year. It doesn't have to be yearly, it could be monthly, but you would have to adjust your rate to reflect the smaller periods of time. Now let's look at the XIRR and XNPV functions and see the difference between the two. For the XIRR function, let's set that up. It's going to ask for values and dates and an optional guess. So my values are right here. Enter the dates here. And I am going to fix those for reasons you'll see in a minute. And let's close that off. We get the same answer, 52%. Remember, we haven't altered any dates here. These are all still evenly spaced. For the XNPV function, we're required to enter a rate. I'm again going to use this rate that we computed here. And my values are going to be right here and my dates match up with those. What do we get there? 
zero. So why is that net present value different from this one? Well, it's just a slightly different way of looking at it. Remember with this net present value function, we're only looking at the three through six rows, the future cash flows, not the one at time zero. So we've got $12,000 going out that isn't reflected here. On this one, we're looking at rows two through six, so we're taking everything into account. It's a slightly different way of looking at things, but those are essentially the same answer. And the internal rate of return functions also return the same answer. And this kind of tells me that these X functions do everything these functions do and more. Let's take a look at some other scenarios. Here's a project B. All the numbers are the same except this last cash flow turned negative. How does that impact our calculations and our formulas? Are they going to have a problem with that? Well, our internal rate of return dropped a little bit as we would expect it to do with a positive cash flow turning negative, and that's consistent with the X function as well. And the net present value has remained the same at $12,000. Here's another scenario for project C. In this case, we have two negative cash flows to start. I would expect that this second negative cash flow will drive our discount rate even lower, but this should remain $12,000 at time zero or zero, depending on how you look at it. So let's drag these over and see how we're doing and that's a consistent result. I just have a couple more scenarios here. This is project D. This one has two sign changes. So we've got a negative, positive, negative. How does this work out with our four different functions? I would expect the internal rate of return to go up as a result of this change and it does go back up to uh, this territory here. And the net present value functions are again consistent in the way they're handling this. These IRR functions, they just expect to have at least one negative cash flow and one positive cash flow. So we've got that in every one of these. Remember these IRR functions, they look at all of the rows, all of the cash flows, including the one at time zero. So that's true for both of them. The net present value functions, this one only looks at the future cash flows, while the XNPV function looks at all rows. The final project, Project E, is a little different. It's got a positive cash flow at time zero, followed by a negative cash flow in the second period. You could have a project or investment like this where you receive a bonus or incentive up front and then negative cash flow in the follow-on year. How do our functions handle this one? Not very well. The internal rate of return has generated an error and neither one of these internal rate of return functions are going to like this situation. For the IRR function to work, you're going to need to start with a negative cash flow followed by a positive cash flow. And of course, since this net present value function uses the rate from this cell, it's going to turn an error as well. Down in the X functions, the XIRR function is returned an internal rate of return of 0%. I'm uh, kind of suspicious of that. That doesn't sound right. And just to check this, I'm going to change one of these cash flows to 100,000. And I'm still getting an internal rate of return of 0%. So I, this is clearly isn't working. And the X net present value function is just discounting the cash flows at 0%, which should be the sum of the cash flows, and that's 24,000. So this actually looks like it is working, but uh, it's got an erroneous rate going into it. Let's take a look at the real advantage of the XIRR function, and that is that we don't have to be bound by these regular intervals in time where cash flows come in or out, we can do something like this where we have irregular intervals in time and the XIRR function will still give us 
the internal rate of return of these cash flows. I've gotten rid of project E because some of our functions weren't working with it, but I kept the other four projects. What I'm going to do is I'm going to focus in on this third year cash inflow. It's the same all across the board in all four projects, and it's pretty big. So what I'd like to do is an experiment. I'm going to roll this date of receipt of that cash flow back in time six months later. So if I receive a big cash flow six months later, that should lower my internal rate of return to some degree. And it's going to have no effect on the net present value of the way we're calculating it here. But just focus on these internal rate of returns as I hit the enter key. And you'll notice that only the ones down here changed because these are the only functions that are actually looking at those dates. The regular internal rate of return does not do that. And they have dropped accordingly the way you would expect by about 7% here, 8% here, and so forth. Basically, that's determined by the other cash flows as well. So this is the huge advantage of the XIRR function. You can have irregular intervals, and these are all on the first of the month, but they can be any weird collection of dates in mid-month. Anything goes in terms of these dates because the XIRR function can calculate that right down to the day. The XNPV function is just as good in that respect. We're just inducing it to work out to zero in this case. I hope you found this video interesting and informative and that you'd consider becoming a subscriber to my channel. If not, please feel free to leave a comment or throw me a thumbs up. Thank you for visiting Spreadsheet Geek.